Welcome to the Flight Club Podcast, a woman's guide to leaning out. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at business launch and growth through the stories of successful female entrepreneurs. Here's your host, Felina Hansen, founder and CEO of Hera Hub. Hello and welcome. I'm excited to share my conversation today with Rhea Langheim. She is passionate. And when I mean passionate, when I say passionate, I mean passionate. Uh, We're going to be having a conversation today about sustainable energy. And she is working towards that. She's particularly interested in accelerating the adoption of green energy technology in homes. And that's what we're going to get into today. She's doing this by building a platform that helps homeowners on their green energy journey to make smart decisions about adopting solar panels, energy storage, and electric vehicles. Welcome to the show today, Rhea. Hi, Felina. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's go back in time. Take us back. Tell us where are you from? What did you study? What's your career path look like? And we'll uh, wind down that road until we get to your current business. Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I am I was born in Germany and raised in the Netherlands. and. So I started my energy journey um, studying in the southwest of Germany, uh, where I worked for a small energy company, and we we were advising uh, multifamily buildings on installing combined heat and power plants, uh, very small ones, and we worked with a lot of um, wind developers in Germany in helping them procure green energy for their operations. Then. I think so, Rhea, I want to of- I want to pause real quick on this before we go too far down the path. What was there an event or was there somebody in your life that that got you excited about this industry? I mean, did you just happen to fall into it? How did that happen? Uh, I I think one of the major events, if you can say that, is um, I was backpacking through Australia when I was 18 years old and um, worked on farms in in the worst drought that Australia had at the time in in 100 years and um, saw kind of you know how how rough it is for farmers to survive in those very tough circumstances and and also learned more about that climate you know is influencing that um, it will rain less and what the impacts are on certain businesses and I think that really got me thinking and I became a lot more interested in the environment and sustainable energy Um, Mm. and then another I would say thing that really got me super excited about working in a field is I studied um, international environmental law in Switzerland and worked on um, the European Emission Trading Scheme, and um, yeah, that got me really excited into looking into what we can do, what we can do on the ground, and how we can change things to make sure that climate change isn't progressing as as much as predicted. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I knew there was a story behind, it and I wanted to make sure we shared that. That's amazing. So you've been at the forefront of this for quite some time. Yeah, I probably started about 13, 14 years ago and worked on energy projects ever since. So as I mentioned, it all started out with working with wind developers and looking into mini combined heat and power. Then the next very cool project I worked on was in Boston. I worked on an enhanced zero geothermal systems project. Uh, It was a research study funded um, under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in Massachusetts. And I then later went on to do my uh, master's in environmental science and policy in Massachusetts as well and worked on uh, smart grid research. And uh, later on, I worked as a data scientist looking into all technologies from solar energy storage electric vehicles and so yeah i've 
I I get more and more excited about the field as I go along. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay, I got to back up here a second because you said something that um, I don't know what that is. Uh, you said advanced geothermal systems. What what does that mean? So yeah, enhanced geothermal systems project was. It's a way of tapping into the heat very deep uh, down in the earth. Wow. And when we talk about deep, it's about five to 10 kilometers of uh, holes that need to be drilled into the earth to try and get the heat out and um, generate electricity that way. And it was very, yeah, it was a very advanced way of generating electricity. And the, the study was created to figure out uh, if it's possible to do that on um, yeah, in the Northeast and the United States. And is it possible? I think yes, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. the, the project uh, didn't uh, move on after that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I guess maybe I've heard of that before, but... Um... That's smart, right? We have a lot of hot air, or not hot air, hot heat <laughs> floating around in the middle of our planet. Why not tap into that? Interesting. Okay. Very, very cool. What, uh, what brought you from Europe to the United States? Yeah, my interest in, um, in really learning more about what happens in the sustainability or the environmental field on the ground and when I came to the U.S. for the first time, it was, I think, 2009, 2010. It was just when uh, Obama became president of the United States. And before that, the, the picture that was portrayed of the United States in terms of addressing climate change was pretty pretty bleak. And But I learned through research that it's not so much um, the majority of efforts are not happening on a federal level, but a lot of states are really pushing to achieve their own goals and have different programs and incentives in place. And I really wanted to learn how how a state like Massachusetts is addressing climate change and um, what type of programs they have um, to further that goal of sustainable of sustainable energy. And that's how. I came to the United States and then also because after my first internship, I found it very interesting. So I decided to apply for a master's to dive, uh, take a deeper dive. Awesome. I love it. So then you made your way to California. How did that, how did that come about? Uh, yeah, I finished grad school and um, as I think at the time my husband and I were applying for jobs, we um, found um, San Diego as a good place for work and I think he got a job here first and um, and I quickly got a job here as well and so we moved across the country uh, to start working here in uh, 2013. I love it and you were working for the Center for Sustainable Energy is that right? Yeah that's correct they're they're a nonprofit that um, primarily administering incentive programs in the state of California and a few states on the East Coast. Um, they were one of the entities that administered the um, incentives for solar homes, mm -hmm. and they're still administering the electric vehicle rebate in California. And uh, as part of those programs, we have a we had a lot of data coming out, which we used to do a lot of behavioral research and understanding um, how the adoption is progressing through certain areas. So why are people motivated to adopt an electric vehicle or a solar system? So we partnered with several major research in institutions in the United States to, um, yeah, to do the research and publish papers on that topic. Wow. So what did you find in that role? I mean, what were the kind of high level takeaways that you learned over the four or so years you were there? Um, people are primarily motivated by reducing their costs when mm. they install a solar system. Mm -hmm. They're very, probably the very, very early adopters of solar systems were primarily 
motivated uh, by environmental reasons. But once mm -hmm. it became a little bit more mainstream when the incentives started rolling out and more people had, um, you know, were able to finance these systems, then we saw the the big motivator was for people to save uh, money on electric bills and. Uh, as I think the, um, the solar programs rolled out, uh, there were also several solar companies that started offering uh, solar leases. So that meant that um, homeowners wouldn't have to pay a, a full system in cash up front, mm -hmm. which, which is still, it's still quite expensive, you know, who has all that money lying around. <laughs> and I think um, as, so there was different uh, financial mechanism that developed in the market and, and along with the, with the solar incentive, um, solar was really progressing in this area in San Diego County. Well, is it still progressing? Because <laughs> I've heard that some of the incentives that were there maybe just even a couple years ago mm -hmm. have gone away. Is is that right? Mm -hmm. Or they've changed? Or what, what's been happening more recently? Yeah, the, the major incentive that uh, was supposed to transform the solar market, that was the California um, solar incentive, I think that uh, was phased out. But what happened because of that, um, the solar cost dropped substantially. So mm -hmm. initially, you needed an incentive to be able to pay for a system. But now the solar costs have come down so much that um, people are also more able to afford a system without that incentive. And so the solar industry is do, still doing well. Another very important factor is that uh, solar systems are still being, are still eligible for investment tax credit, which is 30% mm. of the installed system costs. And that, we still really helps on the financial side uh, for homeowners to make that switch. Got it. So California, there are still some incentives. Are you seeing that across the country as well? It sounds like every state's doing something slightly different. Yes, every state is doing something different. And there's not, I think they're not just those incentives. There's also a mechanism called net metering, which, um, which is a way of for the utility uh, to account for the generation of the solar system versus your mm -hmm. consumption of the household. I think that mechanism uh, varies a lot across different states. And um, so yeah, this, this, I think the solar roll, rollout in the United States has a really big variation, but we see that there that is good news for all of us. <laughs> so, California is still the front runner in that respect. <laughs> well, we do have a lot of sunshine, so that, that doesn't, that's also helpful. Um, so, Rhea, I want to make sure we have time to get to the point uh, that you decided to launch your own business. So you were at the Center for Sustainable Energy for four years, a little over four years, Um and I know you have a family, you have a, um, well, I don't know, baby isn't even the, the right term anymore, <laughs> right? You started your family. Yeah, I have a toddler now. Toddler, yes. <laughs> Not a baby anymore. <laughs> um, and so uh, talk to us about the decision to, you know, step out of working for somebody else and then step into developing your own product. Sure. Yeah, I think in the past years, I've I've been thinking for a while to do something uh, for myself, something that I'm really passionate about. And um, I've seen a lot of changes happening in the market that I personally, as a homeowner who was also interested in installing solar and is driving an electric vehicle, how the landscape and and how utility rates change. Um, was not particularly easy to understand, even for an, uh, an analyst like me who's worked on these projects for a long time. And I really thought at that point, um, I want to make something that makes this uh, a lot easier, that really addresses the challenge that a lot of homeowners have in um, making the jump or not only making the jump to one technology, but keep building and adding other technologies and and taking a little bit of that uncertainty about costs and 
energy billing out of the equation and and at the same time um think of ways think of developing a platform that's not that's not only um puts more power yes to the energy user but also potentially helps um cities and energy providers with planning for their grid because uh we know grids are going to become a lot more decentralized um already starting now but definitely in the future and energy providers and city or cities have very aggressive goals especially here in the city of san diego to reach 100 percent renewables by 2035 and california's target is a little less aggressive uh, they want to achieve that 2045 and part of that energy uh, providers have a lot of work to do and in making that happen and i really wanted to i thought about these challenges so i i decided it it's high time to have a um, independent platform where communities or where the homeowners themselves can um, make much smarter decisions become more empowered as they go along on their energy journey but also help communities see how um, sustainable energy is developing in their immediate neighborhood and help energy providers um, plan better for the future. So I, I love uh, it. I love it. And I've seen the platform or the beta of the platform. Uh, and it's really, really cool. Uh, talk about the name of your business, E Wallaby. <laughs> yes. uh, how, how did you come up with that? And how does that relate to what you're doing? Yes, I was looking into kind of a name for the company that's very that's very relatable and kind of speaks to a little bit of what we're doing. And um, maybe it comes a little bit out of my background for having traveled in Australia for a long time uh, mm -hmm. that I settled on, this, on an Australian animal. Um, yeah, I decided on the animal because it's very agile and I want people to be able to skip and jump uh, through their energy decisions uh, in a very confident way. And I think, um, Having that animal in the East stands for energy, by the way, uh, will hopefully help people kind of jump faster through their energy decisions and also help us overall move much faster to uh, our sustainable energy goals. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> it does it does conjure up kind of this cute, furry animal. So <laughs> that's I love it. Uh, so let's talk about the platform. Um, as much as you're willing to reveal, uh, mm -hmm. how, you know, how is this working? You know, you know, just kind of walk us through maybe from mm -hmm. the experience of a consumer, what, what they will be doing. Cause I know you're still building it and, and developing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. For the first version that we want to put on the market, um, we are making a very strong analytic platform that helps people um, in their energy decisions in two ways right now. One is to help people understand the short and long-term costs of going solar or adding a battery to their home or you know, driving or getting an electric vehicle. And that this, in another way that we really want to empower homeowners with helping them understand how they can uh, save the most money on their journey and a very important factor is being able to choose the best rate plan because we found that there, there are often 10 different rates available and it's a little bit of a jungle out there. Um, when you drive an ele electric vehicle, you're eligible for a few more rates, but knowing um, which one is the best for you is really hard to figure out, especially if you are just kind of going, um, you know, if you just recently got an electric vehicle or solar, and so we do very advanced um, and in-depth uh, rate analysis to help you find the best rate so that um, once you have, you bought your electric vehicle and drive it home, you can confidently go to your utility account and switch rates and, uh, and you know that, you know, you might hopefully pay $600 less compared to what you would on another plan that you were on before. That's really remarkable. I mean, I do just by, you know, looking at the beta that you you came out with, I do now understand a bit of how confusing it is. And, you know, let's 
we, we don't have time to get into why it's so confusing because that's not our problem, so to speak. But being able to build a platform as you are to help people navigate through that uh, process is so critically important. So when do yeah. you, yeah, when do you feel like you will have your your minimum viable product uh, out onto the market? At the moment, we're working towards getting the first product out uh, in the first quarter of 2020. Okay. And and then we already have plans on iterations that are going to follow as we go along. Um, with our next big goal is really thinking how we can strengthen sustainable communities and how people can share information with each other, how they can benefit from each other's information, or what they see in the neighborhood, and how that could potentially influence them making their decisions. And so, yeah, that's a very exciting process that we're looking forward for next year. So would that be uh, folks then, if I'm understanding this, or let me just mm -hmm. back up and make sure I, I'm, I'm clear on this. So as people, uh, so it's an online platform you're, you're building, folks will go in, you know, set up a, a basic account, you know, go through the process of, you know, answering some questions to get uh, information about, you know, savings and plans and, and all of that good stuff. Will you then allow them to opt in to then uh, share some of that information with neighbors and, and things like that? Yeah, that's part of what we're envisioning because um, we know from a lot of research that's been carried out in the past that your friends and your neighbors are one of the biggest influencers that can help you make a decision and often you know, knowing that someone has done it before and someone, you know, who might have a similar house um, might help people to make the decision faster. And that's very critical in this day and age, because um, one of the major problems, I think, with, with people making sustainable energy decisions is that they have very long research time because we all know there are more technologies available. There are a lot of different vendors available, and it's very hard to make the decision for yourself. What am I going to go with? What's the best for me? And kind of cutting that decision time frame is very helpful in, in pushing this sustainable energy field forward. So, so important. Thank you for this work that you're doing, Rhea. It's really fascinating. Um, what, you know, we talked a bit about what's on the horizon for the platform as you roll it out and continue to develop it. You know, what else can you share uh, around things that you're looking forward to in the upcoming year? Yeah, one of the things we're excited about in San Diego County right now that there are uh, different municipalities um, decided to have a community choice aggregator. So this this will be an independent kind of energy provider compared to the SDG and E that we had in the county so far. So so far, and what we're looking forward to is um, greener, almost sustainable energy procurement that's going to be offered to to residents, and also looking into new programs that will benefit um, the area and citizen in in trying to achieve those very aggressive goals that were set by especially the city of San Diego for achieving those goals. Yeah, we're very excited to to be part of that and to see um, how how things move along. And so that, that's, we're in a very exciting time in San Diego right now. Absolutely. So if I heard you correctly, we're going to have another option outside of <laughs> San Diego Gas and Electric for energy? Correct. Um, if wow. you're one of the, yeah, if you're in one of the municipalities that decided on implementation of the CCA, yeah, you will have a choice of um, energy provider in the future. Wow, that is exciting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> As I just got my SDG and E bill this morning. <laughs> All right. Well, Rhea, uh, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, reach out, learn more, all that good stuff, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. Yeah, you can uh, find us online on Instagram, Facebook, and also website. And the website is www.ewallaby.com. And 
feel free to reach out to us uh, via our contact form and follow us as we go along. And yeah, we really are not able to do this by ourselves. We need a lot of people um, to do this with us uh, and be with us on a sustainable path. And so we're really looking forward to a lot of people using the platform, testing the platform, providing us feedback so we can make it stronger and work towards our goal of, of accelerating sustainable energy in the future. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today, Ria. Thank you. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Flight Club, sponsored by Hera Hub. We look forward to sharing more success stories with you soon.